So let's talk about metals and non-metals. Metals have uh, very specific properties. You probably know a lot of these. We know that if you look at metal and polish it, it's going to look shiny, uh, which is uh, often... Scientists like to use words that sound racy, so we say lustrous instead. If you say something has a luster, you're saying it has a shine. Another thing we know about metals is that they conduct. You should not stick metal into the outlet because it will shock you. They conduct uh, electricity, but they also conduct heat. If you stir the pot at home of soup with a metal spoon, that's not going to be as good as if you use one that insulates like a wood spoon or a plastic spoon. Uh, metals are also malleable, which the technical definition that you'll see of malleable is that you can hammer it into a thin sheet. But um, what you need to think about that is it's kind of the opposite of brittle. If you take something that's brittle and you hit it with a hammer, it's going to shatter. Something that's malleable, though, it will bend whenever you push on it. <clears throat> so if you take a penny and hit it with a hammer, it's not going to shatter. It's just going to flatten. And so that's what you need to think about when you think about malleability. And uh, we also, sort of related to that, we say that they're ductile which means you can make into wire. So these are the physical properties of metals. Now metals also have chemical properties which uh, you can probably figure out in a minute. We'll come back to those in a minute. So let's talk about non-metals. Non-metals uh, which I'll do on the same paper, only in a different color. We use red for nonmetals. So for nonmetals, nonmetals are the opposite of all these things. They're not shiny. They're dull. They don't conduct. They insulate. They're not malleable. They're not ductile. They are brittle. So if you try to hit them or stretch them, they'll just crumble. And so that is the difference, some of the physical properties of, chem of metals versus non-metals. And <clears throat> on your periodic table, you should know that there is a dividing line between the metals and the non-metals. And we've already put that on yours, the, that little staircase there. That is the dividing line between metals and non-metals. Generally speaking, there are a couple of exceptions, but... Uh, things to the left of that line, and that it does include the rare earth metals, are metals. These are all metals. Transition metals, rare earth metals, alkali metals, alkaline earth metals. They're all metals. So they would all fit into those categories of shiny conductors that were malleable. To the right, though, these, a small group, those are your non-metals. So uh, if you could find those in molecular form, they would follow the uh, other other rules, they would insulate, they would be brittle, they would be dull, they would not be shiny. And so, <clears throat> that is the difference between metals and non-metals. So, there's one other category, though, that we should talk about while we're here, and that is these things that are kind of in between. If we have, uh, if we look particularly at these guys that are kind of touching the staircase, they are kind of at the dividing line. They're not exactly sure whether they're metals or whether they're non-metals. And so these things are called metalloids. Metalloids. Sometimes they're referred to as, I think some books refer to them as semi-metals. I call them metalloids. And uh, anything touching the, the line full, with a full edge we will think of as a, a metalloid. So Astatine would be a metalloid. Iodine wouldn't because it's just touching with a corner. Arsenic would. Phosphorus wouldn't. Germanium would. Tin wouldn't. The one exception you definitely need to know, there is an exception to this rule. Aluminum, as you might guess, is not a metalloid. You, when you think of aluminum, you think of a metal because that's what it is. So aluminum is a metal. And so one of the things that you can do on a test 
is you can be asked to classify something as a metal, non-metal, or metalloid based on where it is on the table, or by property. If I told you that something was shiny and lustrous, uh, wait, that's the same word twice. If I told you it was shiny and conducted, uh, and gave you a multiple choice, you would choose the one that was a uh, metal. Uh, but if I said if it was uh, insulative and brittle, you would choose the one that was a non-metal. But sometimes, as in the case of like silicon, silicon is kind of interesting because silicon is shiny. It conducts sometimes, but not always. Uh, and so it sort of conducts, uh, sort of insulates, depends. It is shiny. Um, and so you might say, well, it's sort of an in-between thing. And so we look over here in silicon, while well, it's right on that line. So a lot of these metalloids actually have properties in between metals and non-metals. And so uh, if you were given something that was on a test and it said, oh, this is shiny and insulates and is brittle, then you would guess, well, that must be something that has both properties. So I'm going to guess the metalloid thing over there. And so that would be... Uh, what uh, the difference between metals, non-metals, and metalloids is.